Happy holidays, everybody. Today, I am bringing you my version of the No Sew Quilted Ornament. Only, as you can see, this one is personalized. There is a picture of my three beautiful kids, Ray, Kayla, and Allie on here. These quilted No Sew Ornaments have been around for years. And a couple years ago, I wanted to try my hand at them. And after making so many cute ones, I decided that I somehow wanted to make them personalized. And I kept thinking, how can I personalize them? I would love to put a picture in there somehow. And so this is what I came up with. And I have not seen these quilt and ornaments anywhere personalized like this on YouTube or Pinterest. So I'm pretty excited to bring this to you. I hope you all like this because I love this idea. And this idea actually kind of stemmed from me wanting to make Jeff's parents and my parents personalized ornaments every year for Christmas with all their grandbabies on it. And so I thought how neat every year to update, give them three new ornaments each year and have updated pictures of all their grandbabies on them and they can put them on their tree. I love that idea. I do it with the family picture like this of you know just Ray, Kayla, and Allie, one each year. And this one was um, actually from 2013. And so every year, you know, I just get a picture with the three of them and make a new ornament for my tree with it. And so I wanted to show you how I go about doing this. And I absolutely hope you guys love this video because I love making these. And I think that these are such an awesome gift to give and even to receive on Christmas this year. And I know that um, when I gave it to Jeff's mom, she absolutely cried when she saw her bag full of ornaments with all her grandbabies on them. So um, just an idea, you still have time before Christmas is coming and these don't take very long and I say you go try them. So what do you need for this project? You need styrofoam balls. And I bought these at Walmart. Um, this actually is not the size I used for this one. It's the next size down. But um, the four inch ball was all I could find this year at Walmart. And for two of them, it was $1.98. I've also made them with the three inch balls. And when I make them with the three inch balls, I do the individual grandbaby on each one. So you can do it that way or you can use the bigger one, whatever size you wanna use, your preference, it's up to you, but that's what you need. And for the pictures, I use the Avery fabric transfers, and this happens to be for light materials. I typically get it for dark materials because if you're gonna use a printed fabric, you can still put the picture on the printed fabric, but if you're using the light material fabric transfer, you cannot use any kind of printed fabric. You need to use a solid pale to white fabric for these and this was all I had this year. I didn't feel like going out and buying these because I'm not going to lie, these are a bit on the expensive side. Um, they're eight and a half by 11, six unprinted sheets and I think I paid $11.99 for these. But on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, if you do wallet size pictures, you can get nine pictures per one sheet. And so that's why I did it. It ended up being a bit budget friendly for me. And so with that being said, the light one is not my favorite. The dark one is, but we're using this today and we're gonna make it work for this year. Print up wallet size on your computer. And these are the two pictures that I'm gonna do today. Um, if you all follow me, um, you all know that this past May, my mom uh, passed away at the age of 65. And uh, she was very young to be taken away from us. But this is my mom and Allie at the soccer field. And it was absolutely, uh, one of the other soccer moms had taken this picture. 100%, this is my all-time favorite picture ever. Um, I love, love, love this picture. Just the look of Allie so concentrated on whatever my mom is saying and my mom looking up at her. It's my absolute favorite picture ever. And so because mom is gone, I don't ever want to lose this picture and I always want it. I just always want to remember this. So it is going to be made an ornament and it will be on my tree every year from now until eternity. And 
This is Allie's uh, first year, her harvest school pictures. And so I'm also gonna make one out of that. But today we're gonna do my mom's picture on a bigger ball. And um, let me show you how we do that. So once you've printed up your picture, um, you need to, when you print these, it depends on what transfer you get. The dark transfers actually peel off the back and you can iron them onto your fabric. For some reason, this lighter transfer, um, you're supposed to mirror uh, print your image and then lay it flat down and iron it on. And so you gotta be real careful about um, what type you get and really read the directions before you go ahead and print these out because you need to know if it's peel off the back and iron on or if you need to mirror your image. So once you've printed them out and you've gotten your images done, you also need um, for this project a light piece of fabric. If you're doing the dark um, fabric transfer, you could have any color you want. You could have it printed, whatever, it does not go through. But we've got the light, so today I am using white and the only white I have is just a flannel, but you could use a cotton linen, whatever. I just, like I said, I didn't wanna go out and buy extra stuff, so I'm using what I have here in the house. So you need um, some light fabric, and then you need to just go out and pick what fabrics you want to decorate your ball with. And so this one, you know, obviously was an absolutely adorable country quilted fabric from a couple years ago that I had chosen and I tried to, you know, and I think I had probably used the light. Actually, I don't think that was the light transfer. This was the dark, but I think I just wanted the picture to stand out more. So I put it on the white background. And as you can see, um, this white is actually um, a printed white and you don't see the print through the picture because that is the dark fabric transfer that I used for this one. But uh, the other day, I did the light fabric on a white fabric that was printed. And as you can see, um, I don't know if you can totally see, but the flowers came out on Allie's face and um, really took away from the picture. And then I tried to do my mom's picture and there were polka dots going through this one. So I'm not gonna use these now because of that and on the camera it probably doesn't look as bad as it does in person but it really takes away from the picture so anywho so you want to go ahead and pick out whatever fabrics you want to use to decorate the outside of your ball and i am going to use this really cute frosty christmas frosty with a solid red and i am also going to use white you need to cut two and a half by two and a half inch squares of each. And I'm gonna be honest with you right now, I did not count how many squares this ball takes, but around this time, I cut tons of these squares anyway. And I have myself just a huge bag of two and a half by two and a half inch squares because I like to make these balls every year with the new fabric, Christmas fabrics that I buy from Walmart. You know, you need a good amount of these. And so I have my red, I've got my solid red, I've got my frosty, and I've got my white. You're also going to need the plain old metal straight pins. I use a thimble because uh, to push the straight pins in because my fingertip gets very sore from pressing these straight pins in. And it gets to the point where I can't push it in at all anymore, so I have to use a thimble and it will help. I also in the past have used 100% straight pins for each quilted ball. And in doing that, I have bought the Walmart 750 count straight pins. And 750 will get me maybe four ornaments. That is it. And these straight pins are not super cheap. I would say these are like six bucks for this container. And I just thought like, holy wow, if I'm making everybody, all the grandparents, six ornaments, this is going to be a little bit costly. So there's gotta be a way that I can cut down on the amount of straight pins that I'm using per ornament ball. 
And so what I came up with was also using my hot glue gun at times. So go ahead and plug in your hot glue gun, get your glue sticks ready because I'll show you when and where on these balls you can do this. And I tell you, I would rather use glue sticks than straight pins anyway because glue sticks are way less expensive. They go much farther. And um, honestly, it looks quite a bit neater in some areas using your glue your glue gun. So um, I've just gotten a glass that has both circle circumferences that I like on it. And I am just going to, I'm just going to place this down. And what I like about this is it's clear so I can see exactly what's going into the circle and frame it up to where I want it. And I am going to take a pencil and I am just going to trace the outside of this glass. So that's what I've done. So now I am going to go and iron this onto my fabric. And so we're gonna peel the other one up. And that's what we're left with. So for my mom's picture, I'm gonna go ahead and use the four inch ball because it is a bigger picture. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take your straight pins and you are going to place your picture on your ball. And you wanna go ahead and pin the corner as tight as you can, that corner, then you wanna kinda Stretch it and pin the other corner. And you might have to undo these corners a couple times just to get it good, but maybe we'll be lucky today and we won't have to because sometimes it'll buckle. Yeah, see how it kind of buckled over there? I don't like that look. I like it nice and flat. Go ahead and flatten that out. Pin that down. We're gonna unpin this corner. And pull that flat. And there we go. So if it is buckled a little bit on the white here and not on the picture, because when we do it, it's okay. The white part, don't worry so much about. Just so long as your picture is laying nice and flat is all I'd worry about. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to start at the very top of my picture and I wanna find as close to the center as I can. And first, what you wanna do, take one of your two and a half by two and a half inch squares and don't worry about being perfect on this, but you wanna take your straight pin and you wanna find the center, get as close to the center of your fabric as you can get. And you want that to be on, if, if you have a printed side, you want it to be on the non-printed side of your fabric, the not good side. and just go ahead and push that through. And now we are going to find the top of our picture. Go ahead and stick your needle in there and you're left with this. You're going to fold it down. And at this angle, you can actually see if you're pretty centered and you want it to be as straight as you can get this. So now that we've folded our fabric in half, so there's the needle, we're gonna go ahead and fold it in half. So we've got a rectangle, then we are going to fold one side down and pin it. Pin it in the corner there. 
and then you are going to pull this side down and pin that side. So that is what you are left with. So now we're going to go to the bottom with our needle. Then we are going to try and go straight down from this point. We fold it down and it looks pretty centered to me. And we are going to fold it over and look at your ball head on and your two points should be right on with each other. Go ahead and fold your other side down and pin it. And that's what we have. So now we're gonna come to the side and do the same thing on all four points. So now with the red, we're gonna go ahead and find our center again. Fold your side. And pin it. Fold your other side. Find your center. So there we go. So we've got all four points. Now we're going to go ahead and fill in the other four points the same exact way with the red. Okay, so this is what our ornament should look like right now. And so now what we're going to do is this is where the glue gun comes in handy. So instead of, if you want, you can pin down this corner and then pin down this corner and then pin down this corner and this one, and you can go all the way around, pinning them down so it's nice and flat. But um, I don't. This is where I use my glue gun. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna pull this flap to the side and I'm gonna start with this flap here. And you can see that there's kind of like a little hole there, you know, just from the fold right here. I'm going to stick a bit of glue right along the edge in there. And then I'm gonna push it down. And that's just to flatten this bit. And after I've done that, I'm going to, after I've flattened it, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna put a dot of glue there, and I'm gonna lay it flat. Glue it inside. Flip it over and glue it down. And that is what we are left with. And it looks smooth and neat and that's really what you want. Next layer, I'm gonna do the snowman. So I'm gonna do the same thing with finding the center. Since this is a printed fabric, you wanna find the opposite side, the bad side. And that's the side you're going to stick your pin in. And now we are going to go in between the two reds because see how there's still some of the white showing now we're gonna go in between the two reds and we kind of want to center it in there so it's not off to one side you know that it's right in the middle that it's not over here it's not over here but it's right in the middle lower than your points and you're gonna do that in each of them Alrighty, so this is what you should have. I went ahead and finished my row and glued down my edges all the way around the snowman row. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the next row with snowman as well. The only difference on this row is now we are going to be putting the needle in the center where this crease is, where the, fold it, where the two folds meet, we're gonna go ahead and put our needle in there now. Fold it over 
And I'm thinking it might take a couple more rows to get halfway. We'll see though. And I'm gonna show you how to figure out where halfway is on here. Let me show you that right now. That's what we're gonna look like. Me being the perfectionist that I am, came up with this. I got myself some ribbon and I wrapped my ribbon the whole circumference of the ball. I did the whole circumference of the ball. And I cut the ribbon right where the two ends meet. So that was what I did. So the ribbon goes around the entirety of the ball. So I went ahead, I folded it in half, and I'm gonna go to the top and I'm just gonna cut the top. When I'm doing these ornament balls, I am on the couch watching a movie or laying in bed before bedtime, just winding down. And the last thing I wanna do is be toting a ruler or a measuring tape into the room with me. I have my little bag, it goes with me, and that just makes it easy. I'm gonna take my ribbon. I am going to find the middle of the top here, where my picture is, there's the middle. And I'm gonna hold it there. I'm gonna go around the ball, and where the end is, is where the middle of your ball is to start your other side. You can do this before you even start your project if you want, but now I've got a dot there and I have done this more times than not of having my center of the bottom off and it just didn't come out good. And so this way, there you have it. You know where your center for the bottom is and your two points are going to line up perfectly. You can also take the other string, the other half of your string, cut that in half. You're gonna take it to your dot And this is the one we just put on. And it is just about to the center. We are going to put a dot right there so we know. And I'm gonna go along to the other side. And I'm gonna put a dot there. These dots are going to tell you where the top half of your ball is done because we have to do the bottom half and we want it to meet in the middle so we can put our band. And we don't want the middle to be up here or down here or off. So that's why I do that because that way I know, okay, this is going to be my last row. This is going to be my last row for this side. So I finished up the third row and um, we are halfway down the ornament ball. So we are going to turn it over and where this mark is, is where we are going to start the bottom half of this project. And I am going to start it off with white because the picture has white. So I'm just gonna start with white down here. So we're gonna do the, in the middle, And with this, we are going to put the pin right smack where the dot is. We're gonna turn it over, go to the opposite side. And we are gonna go right in the same hole, if you can, that you did your previous pin, this first pin. See how my points are head to head? It. 
and there you have the center of your bottom. So now I'm going to take my hot glue gun. I'm going to glue down all of these points. And like I said, if you want to use straight pins, go for it. Nothing wrong with that too. I was just trying to save some money by not using as many straight pins. So now that we've finished this and all of our corners are glued down, now it's time just to start with the solid red. And that is the next row. Since this is the bigger ball, I'm gonna bring it down a bit. So we've done all four of our points. So I'm going to glue these down. So we've got all four of them down. Now we're going to go and fill in the sides. Okay, so we've got those four done, and now I'm going to glue them down. Okay, so now all those are glued down, and we are done with the red, we are done with the white. Now it's time just to finish off our rose with frosty, our frosty material. So I am gonna go all the way around with frosty, So I've gotten all four of those frosties on. I've glued them down. Now I'm going to do right in here, right in here, right in here. Okay, so I finished the third row. We have the white, the solid red, and then we've got the frosty, and it's all glued down. So now I'm going to start off onto the fourth and final row. I'm going to go ahead and offset it, and I'm going to put it in between the frosties that are done right up in here. And um, I think that that'll be a nice finishing touch to it. Okay, so I finished the third row of the bottom, and I think I'm gonna do just one more row because there seems to be quite a gap here in between, and I think I could get away with one more small row so these two edges meet together. And so I'm gonna try one, and let's see how it turns out, and if it looks like I need to go forward with it, then we will. Okay, so I think I'll start right here and we will we'll go into the the I don't know if you can see it, but see how that pin shows as well. And I just don't want those to show, so I think in between these two, I'm going to put one last one that goes down. So it'll be offset. So let's see how that looks and how far down it goes. Yeah, see how now the edges come up to each other there. I think the reason I needed an extra row on the bottom half was because the picture here was so much bigger of an area than this white star, so it does take a little bit more. But that's okay because it's not gonna look terrible. It's still gonna look super neat when we're done. So I'm gonna do the one more row. Okay, so that last row did it. I'm happy with how all my edges meet up together both in the front and the back um, super happy with how it came together so the last step here you know you can go with a wide ribbon if you want and you can wrap 
that around your ornament, but I personally don't like that. So what I do is I cut a nice long strip of matching fabric. This strip is two and a half inches wide and it is the length of the circumference of the ornament ball plus about an inch and a half is what I do. And what I do is I iron it. I iron in the edges and on one end, I fold it down and iron in that edge. And then I take and I fold it in half and iron it flat. So I've got this width. And this is, I wanna say, three quarters of an inch. Oh no, it's an inch. So this is an inch wide. So once you've done that, Find the top of your ornament where you're gonna place the ribbon and that's where you're gonna start the strip that you've just ironed. And go ahead and glue it on. Just glue it on just like so. and you want to center it so you cover up this whole edge where your two sides meet. Go ahead and wrap it all the way around your ornament and I, I don't worry about gluing it shut because it is wrapped so tightly that it's not going to come open. It's not going to separate where you ironed it. So um, I don't worry about sewing it or gluing it and once you've gone all the way around, I do have quite a bit of extra there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this excess off. But I wanna leave enough to fold it in because I like my edge finished. And I'm just gonna put a dot of glue in there because I didn't iron it, just to hold that edge down. There we go, so glue that down. So before we finish this now, I'm gonna take the ribbon that I've chosen, and I've just chosen a regular white thin ribbon. I'm gonna cut it to the length that I want it. I am going to hot glue my ribbon edges together like so. Then I am going to take my ribbon and on the edge that we first initially started, I am going to put glue on the end of my ribbon. I'm gonna place the ribbon right like so. Going to take the edge that I've cut and finished now that my ribbon is glued in there and I'm going to finish gluing it down. Glue down this last edge. So it looks just like this. And when you lift up your ribbon to hang it, that's what it looks like. And there you have your personalized photo country quilted Christmas ornament. Isn't that just adorable? And what a special gift. I think that when I become a grandmother, I hope I get gifts like this from my kids because I love making these. I love giving these just by seeing my mother-in-law's reaction and my mom's reaction to these ornaments. I think that any grandparent or parent would absolutely love these. 
And this ornament is going to remind me every Christmas that my mom is with me. I hope you all like this video today. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe to my channel for more Kelly Barlow Crafting on a Budget videos to come. I've got tons of holiday uh, ornament and creations left to show you, so please subscribe. And remember that for every 100 subscribers up to 1,000 subscribers, I will be having a giveaway of one of my handmade creations. So in order to receive one, you've gotta subscribe, everybody. So subscribe, 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 please. So until next time, everybody, hope you're having a happy holiday season and happy crafting on a budget and bye for now.